Well guys, this is my um, spoiler review of X-Men Apocalypse and I'm going to start off by saying that I really like this film. This is a really good film and I have no idea why it's getting a lot of crap from the critics. I think on uh, Rotten Tomatoes it's like below 50% rotten. I think it's about 48% or something, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, but it is pretty low. But anyway, I really like this film. I think it's good. Um, I'm not sure if it's better than Days of Future Past. I do personally like it better than First Class. And I like it better than the original X-Men trilogy. Um, so yeah, it's it ranks up there in, in like at least my top three X-Men films. I'm not sure how I'd rank them, but it's really good. Now, I think a lot of... Um, a lot of the crap that it's getting from critics is because people are just walking in, you know, as, and seeing it as a standalone film. And if you've if you've like invested yourself in the like the X Men series, then it 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 really pays off. But if you haven't, then you might find everything you know muddled and wonder what's going on. And I think that's what um, a lot of critics have uh, complained about, and you know, giving it a low score. But um, yeah, it's really, really good film. Um, the performances are really good, especially uh, Michael Fassbender's. His performance is fantastic. Um, the the scene, you know, the film starts off and he's he's living a peaceful life. He's got a family now after the uh, the events of um, Days of Future Past. He's got he's, he's becoming a recluse. He's gone into hiding, um, and he's trying to be human again. He's a uh, he's got a job. Like I said, he's got a wife and a daughter, and everything seems to be going well. But then um, he saved someone, <laughs> which he, he shouldn't have done, you know. But what can you do, you know? This, this, one of his work colleagues were, like, were going to die. And um, basically the resulting scene, which is a fantastic scene, results in his family getting killed, his wife and daughter getting killed. And then um, that's the return of badass Magneto. He, he, he dispatches away with all the um, police who... We're there to take him away. And yeah, Magneto's back. But the scene itself is awesome. The the acting by um Fassbender is fantastic, it really is. Up until that point, the film was like it was just feeling its way, you know, introducing a few characters here and there, it wasn't really kicking into the story. It had introduced Apocalypse by then and um introduced Silo uh, no yeah, probably Silo, but introduced Cyclops, um brought Avok back and Myra McTaggart and it was just feeling its way. It got got you into you know to, to um, see where Xavier and Beast were at this point, and then to see where Magneto was. Introduce Storm, and but this is um, the the part of the film where the actual plot kicks in, and you would like right. This film was good as it start. You know, the first half hour was good, but now it's going to kick in and it's going to get really good, and it did. And um, the it basically. Um, shows the film shows you how powerful Apocalypse is, and yeah, the portrayal of po Apocalypse was um, pretty good, to be honest. You, you know, there, there was aspects of him what they could have done, which they didn't do, which was slightly disappointing. Like, uh, there's a scene where he's fighting Xavier in like the astral plane, and he grows tall, like eh? he gets really big, but he doesn't do it in you know in physical form, which was a bit disappointing because in the the cartoons and the comics, he does do things like that. And he, he, uh, my first exposure of Apocalypse was the nineteen nineties cartoon, which was awesome. And in that, he could create weapons out of his hands and shield and grow in stature, and he was just really good. I mean, in this, I wasn't, I wasn't really sure what his powers were. I mean, he had some like teleportation type power. He could, you know make other mutants powerful, more, more, pretty much more powerful. Um, and he could, his, his, his favourite form of just killing people was sinking like parts of them into like the floor or sinking them into the wall. And he does like kill someone with um, grains of sand and everything. But all in all, I did, I did like Oscar Isaac's performance. I, think, I did think he's good. His voice sounded great. He was a good character. I do hope he comes back. Um, because they do dispatch of him, they do defeat him in a really great way, which I'll get into in a in a in later on in the in this review. But I do hope he comes back in a future film because this is apparently 
the end of this trilogy. But the writer, Simon Kingberger, said that they are planning another X-Men film and it's going to be set in the 90s, whether that's going to be an actual X-Men film or a New Mutants film or whatever. But yeah, I really do hope, you know, they continue with the, the current X-Men because the X-Men that they introduce, um, young Jean Grey, young Nightcrawler, young Cyclops, Quicksilver comes back. A fantastic. Um, Cyclops, I really like Cyclops. He's one of my favourite X-Men characters. And um, in the previous films that he's been play, played by James Marsden, he's really been screwed over, underused. It's like they haven't known what to do with him. They've they've given him the, um, the, the Boy Scout role. And there's more to Cyclops than just being the leader of the X-Men. And in this, Tyler Sheridan does quite a lot. There's, he's got a little bit of cockiness about him. Um, and... I really liked his portrayal of Cyclops. He does do quite a lot of... He, he, well, he, he's involved a lot in the um, last fight, which is really good. He's in a lot of scenes, and I really like his portrayal of Cyclops. Sophie Turner is really good. as Jean Grey, too. Um, and she has a, an awesome power display at the end, which she, makes you excited for a future X-Men film. You know, it's like she finally unleashes the Phoenix, and it's the Phoenix Force that you want to see it's not like the the crappy whatever Jean Grey in The Last Stand did you know would swipe around and people disintegrated this was actual Phoenix Force it was a a flaming bird and it was like yes finally you know we're getting to see we're going to get to see um, an actual Phoenix so hopefully they'll we'll see that in the future maybe the next film I don't know Another thing that I liked is that the characters, the X-Men, by the end of the film, actually get costumes, colourful costumes. Finally, in the franchise of, you know, Black Leather, they get colourful costumes. Well, I know they got, they had colourful costumes in first class, which was good, and then they reverted back to black, which is a shame, and same with this one, but by the end, they've got the colourful costumes. Cyclops actually has a costume, which is very reminiscent of his 90s one, you know, with his um, strap, and the X here. So, I am looking forward to that. The team of the X-Men, they're in the danger room at the end and it really does make you excited for the next instalment of the franchise. Really cannot wait. Really looking forward to where they're going to go. Um, the scene with Quicksilver, really, really good. Now, a lot of people, a lot of critics have said that, oh, this scene doesn't, you know, it's nowhere near as good as uh, the Days of Future Past scene. It's just ripping it off. You know, they're just copying it. But... One, so what? And two, what else can you do with Quicksilver? You know, that that's the sort of thing you want to see. And it is an awesome scene. You know, the the mansion is blowing up and he's pretty much saving everyone in the mansion to the sounds of um, the Eurythmics' Sweet Dreams. It's fantastic. It's a fantastic scene. Um, yeah, really good. Really, really funny scene. Um, and then it's a shame that in the last trailer, they they spoiled the um, the cameo of Wolverine because as soon as um, Striker comes and is you know he takes some X Men away and then the other X Men follow him and you know it's like well they can only be going to one place Alkali Lake which is in X Men Two and they do go to Alkali Lake and as soon as that happens it's like right just waiting for Wolverine now so that was it was a shame that they showed. In, in the last trailer, but the actual cameo of Wolverine was fantastic, you know, he goes on a berserker rampage, he's pretty much wearing what he wore in the comics when it comes to Weapon X, you know, the, the thing on his head and the, the packs around his his waist and everything, and it's just, it just looks fantastic, it's a really fantastic scene. Um, Jean Grey does a little bit of helping him out with a couple of memories and then he's off, but he, you know, it is a brutal scene, he is killing people left, right and centre, there's blood everywhere, and, yeah, a really, really great cameo scene. Um, the Horsemen, I think... I, not, they weren't real. They were, they, apart from Magneto, they were pretty much underused, even though one of them was Storm. I was looking for a little bit more out of uh, Psylocke and Archangel. You know, um, they were good, and visually they looked good, but they didn't really say much, and... You know, they are major players in the X-Men world and I kind of was hoping that they'd um, do a little bit more. So maybe another day, you know, you might see them in another film, possibly, you never know. 
Not sure if Angel Archangel actually died or not. I know he was he was in a, he was in the plane when it crashed, but they didn't confirm that. But Psylocke, she she um, saunters off at the by the end of the film, so hopefully she'll be back. Um, and Storm joins up with the X Men, so hopefully she, in in the next instalment, she's a part of the team now. She'll have a lot more to do. You know, the actress was pretty good as Storm. I prefer I liked her more than I liked um, Ali Berry in the role, but. She didn't really do a lot, you know. She she threw a couple of lightning bolts at Cyclops, and then that was it, pretty much. But all in all, really great film. Beast was excellent. I liked seeing Moira McTaggart and um, Alex Summers return. Unfortunately, Alex Summers was the casualty of the film, Avok. Um, so yeah, I was a bit disappointed he died, but someone had to, and his you noise. Know, He's, 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 he served his role well. He's introduced Psylocke. Uh, Psylocke. Keep on a Psylocke. He's introduced Cyclops to the X-Men. So we'll go on from there. And hopefully um, Scott Summers will be the new leader in the next film. And not Mystique. Um, I didn't mind Jennifer Lawrence in this. A lot, I, I, I read some um, reviews prior to seeing the film and a lot of them said that she looked bored and she's given a you know she's phoning in a performance but I didn't actually mind her performance you know I didn't think she was that bad I thought she was all right so yeah I don't see where the um, critics are coming from on that angle um, but all in all really really good film I, I really enjoyed it I've only seen it once um, probably need to see it a couple more times to you know take more of it in uh, to, I'm not sure if it's better than Days of Future Past or not yet. One thing what we're lacking in Day in Apocalypse was there was no Iceman, and he's my favourite X-Men character. So, you know, <laughs> Iceman's in Days of Future Past, and he does a, does quite a bit in that. And as you can see, I've got the awesome rogue cut there where he does quite a lot in that. Um, but yeah, uh, really good film. There, there was a if 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 you've not seen the film yet, which I imagine you have if you're watching this spoiler review, but in case you haven't, stick to the end credits. Stick till after the end credits. Stay in the cinema because there's a little um, scene. And basically, it looks like they're going to introduce Mr. Sinister in um, the next one because there's some um, guys, some business guys and soldiers mopping up the um, Weapon X facility after Wolverine's rampage. And they're taking like vials of blood samples and one's marked Weapon X and everything. So possibly could um, introduce X-23 or X-23 or whatever that character's called. The um, the female Wolverine clone, maybe. Um, and they put the vials in a case and shut the case and there's a, there's, a, there's a logo on the case and it says Essex Corp. So Essex, Nathaniel Essex, Mr. Sinister. So possibly um, they might be introducing Mr. Sinister into uh, the next X-Men. Not sure where they're gonna go, cause there's they could go either way. They could, you know, you know, they could um, do the Phoenix Saga again, the Dark Phoenix Saga, or they could have Mister Sinister as a villain, or bring back Apocalypse. Maybe I'd like to see Apocalypse again, cause I, he has a he was good in this, but it could have been a whole lot more. It could have been, you know, really, really good, and I hope they bring him back. Um, the way they defeat him, which you know, it was the only way they could defeat him. Really, you know, Jean Grey unleashing the full Phoenix power on him to de you know strip away his uh, molecular structure and everything. So that was I, I do I do like how they defeated him. You know, because the 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 end battle, you know, it shows Quicksilver fighting him, and then you know he stops him in a, in a way, you know, breaks his leg and everything. So that's him out of thingy. But there's it's a good team battle. You know, there's some good beast action. Storm gets involved. Cyclops. Professor X is fighting him on the Astro plane at the same time. Then Magneto gets involved. It's really, really good, the final battle. And then, um, but the the losing, and then Jean Grey, you know, unleashes the Phoenix Force to defeat him. Um, Nightcrawler was really good. Really, really pleased with uh, Nightcrawler. He was really good too. Um, thought there might have been more Jubilee in the film because they, you know, she was mentioned quite a lot in. Uh, the filming up to the film, the, the the they did mention that there was a big mall scene in the in the film, and I think they only showed a little bit of that where they're leaving the cinema, which was a funny joke, by the way. You know, they're criticizing third films. You know, they've just been to see Return of a Jedi, and they're criticizing 
third films in the franchise, which is pretty much, you know, a, an attack on Brett Ratner's The Last Stand. Um, but yeah, uh, really enjoyed this film. If you're wondering what's behind my head, it's First Class and Days of Future Past Steelbooks. I've got pretty much all the X-Men films in Steelbooks plus the road cut. Um, and I'm looking forward to the um, X-Men Apocalypse Steelbook HMD exclusive, so I'll be getting that when it's out. But yeah, I really want to see this film again just to um, see where I rank it. But um, yeah, really good film. Really enjoyed it. I'm not sure what the critics are going, uh, uh, you know, what they're seeing. I've seen a couple of videos where they're defending it, but all in all, a lot of people seem to be disappointed in the film, and I've, I, don't, I do not know why. I really enjoyed it. So I will give this film an A. Well, this has been my review for X-Men Apocalypse. Tell me what you think of it. Tell me what you think of the film, if, whether you liked it or you didn't like it, what you think is going to happen in future X-Men films. Um, like and share. And remember, guys, stay heroic.